Asset allocation is the most important concept that you need to understand for your personal investment portfolio. And that is because it determines the risk and also the return of your portfolio. That means how much money you're actually making with your money. I'm Sophia, a doctor from Germany. I love to talk about money. I love to talk about building wealth. A huge part of building wealth is investing, that's why we're talking about asset allocation. My multiple six-figure net worth is allocated in a 90-10. I'll explain later what that means. Now, to be honest, I don't expect this video to get a lot of views because asset allocation doesn't sound as sexy as how to become a millionaire by 22. That ship has already sailed for me anyway. But I want to have it on my channel because I refer to asset allocation a lot in my other videos about investments and I can't always explain it in detail so I wanted to make this in-depth beginner's guide to asset allocation. So let's talk about what it is, why it is important, how you can figure your own asset allocation right now and how to set your ideal asset allocation. And in the end I will also explain what rebalancing has to do with all of this. So let's start with what it is. Asset allocation is the way you divide your portfolio. So your collection of all of your investments into the different types of investments or of assets. Now let us break it down word by word. An asset is a tangible or an intangible thing with economic value like stocks, bonds, real estate, cash, cryptocurrency and so on. And allocation is how much of each asset you own and in what percentage they all add together. For example, if your net worth is $100,000 and you have $80,000 in stocks and $20,000 in cash, then your asset allocation is 80% stocks and 20% cash. Why is this important? Now your asset allocation determines the risk and the return of your portfolio. If you have a hundred percent cryptocurrencies in your portfolio, that's a lot of risk. If you have a hundred percent cash in your portfolio, that is zero or at least close to zero risk. Now risk and return have a very special relationship. Risk is how likely your investment is going down to zero and the return is how much your portfolio grows. 3% a year, 5% a year, 10% a year and so on. Now the lower the risk, the lower the return. Like cash. Now cash, lying here on my desk, doesn't do anything. It doesn't grow. It doesn't get less either because 100 euros in 10 years from now will still be 100 euros. So it will still look like this. Just right now I can buy approximately 20 Starbucks latte macchiatos from this one. And in five years from now it'll only maybe be 10. And the higher the risk, the higher the return. So without risk, no return and high risk investments can make us very wealthy. But if it were that easy, everyone would do it, obviously. The problem is that high risk investments can also go down to zero or even below zero, depends on the investment. Now the secret is to find the right balance between risk and return. And as you can imagine, there is a very broad spectrum because no risk and very high risk. So we have a lots of assets and also allocation of that assets to choose from. And when we speak of assets, sometimes you will find the word asset class and an asset class is all the assets that have a similar risk return profile. So cash in its physical form like this does have the same or at least similar risk return profile like the cash in your checking account. Maybe there you get 0.02%, but you know, it's like at least close to each other. And and which allocation on this broad spectrum we choose is actually very personal. But we'll get back to that later. So what asset allocation does is risk management by diversifying. So putting more than just one asset into our asset allocation, we minimize the risk. Let's say we have an asset allocation of 60% stocks, 20% bonds, 10% crypto and 10% cash. Now if crypto crashes down completely, it does doesn't affect our whole portfolio because it's only 10%. And also, at least in theory, the different asset classes don't fluctuate simultaneously, meaning that one goes down or the others go down as well. Now you will sometimes hear that, for example, if stocks go up, then bonds go down or the other way around, or gold goes down when stocks go up. Wisdoms like that are only partly true, so I wouldn't fully rely on them. Because in the end, 
all our assets are somewhat economically connected. So if there is really a huge, huge crash like in 2008, it is absolutely possible that you see everything go down. But that's always only temporarily, at least if you look at all the different asset classes. And what remains true is that having different asset classes in your portfolio makes it less volatile. And volatile means, you know, these extreme ups and downs that you see, for example, in the stock market. If you mix stocks with other asset classes, you don't see it this extreme in your whole portfolio. And asset allocation has also an effect on the performance, on the performance of the portfolio. Now, because we are minimizing risk, that has a positive effect on the performance because at the same time, we're minimizing the loss. By the way, if you find this helpful, I invite you to subscribe if you want to learn more about investment terms like this. And alongside these factors, there were other advantages as well. That is, if you define an asset allocation, you are less likely to panic sell or to euphoria buy. <laughs> Like, you know, when everyone gets in the hype and you also want to dive in, but you have your plan for your asset allocation, it has the potential to prevent you from at least going all in on that hype. And because your portfolio as a whole is less volatile, you're also less likely to be provoked to make an emotional decision. And overall, having an asset allocation just kind of forces you to be disciplined about it. Now, let's take a look of how you can find out your own asset allocation right now. Now, if you already have investments and you want to find out your asset allocation, here's a quick way to find out. In case you already know it, you can skip the section. So what you do is you take a look at all of your investments. You categorize them into different asset classes or into different assets like stocks, bonds, cash and so on. Let's say you have several stocks and maybe also several funds. You can take them all together. And let's say you have funds and the value is $58,000. And then you have bonds. Maybe the value is $32,000. And you also have cash laying around that is $10,000. Now you have a total value of the asset classes. You count them all together. So you get 100%. So in our little example, the sum of all of the investments is $100,000. And now you can divide the value of each category by the value of the 100%. And that times 100 gives you the percentage of each asset class. So in our case here, the value each will be funds 58%, bonds 32% and cash 10%. And now the next step can be to define your ideal asset allocation. In case you have several savings accounts, let's say, I don't know, two savings accounts and in each is $5,000, you can count that together to, you know, cash $10,000. Now the beauty when it comes to asset asset allocation is that you can totally personalize it for your needs. And how you will define it for yourself depends basically on three things. Number one is your time horizon. That means how long you are able or willing to tie up your money. And the longer your time horizon is, the more risk you can take into your portfolio. As a rule of thumb, that is the first part of a little matrix. So time horizon. Number two is your risk tolerance. That means how much fluctuation of your portfolio you can handle. Now, the lower your risk tolerance, the less risk you should have in your portfolio because it doesn't do you any good to see stocks go up and down and up and down and every time you panic and maybe you sell and this just hurts you more than it helps you. If you don't know your risk tolerance, you can also start with very little amounts and then, you know, just see how you react. And number three is your financial goals. If you want to build wealth fast, you have to take risks. If you want to preserve wealth, you should have less risk in your portfolio. If you want to buy a house within the next three years, you should not put everything into stocks because from a financial goals perspective, that just doesn't make sense because the market is too volatile. And what might go into your asset allocation as well, at least partly, is the market conditions. Now I'm saying partly because my favorite investment wisdom is time in the market is better than timing the market. But sometimes timing the market can be beneficial. If you have watched the housing market for the last 10 years and you want to go into real estate and you see the prices at an all time low, then that can be an indicator to be a good time to get in. Also, and I was in that position, I think a few months back, if you have a large sum to invest and you see the market at an all time high, it's also okay to not go in with everything at once. So if you feel like it's being a hurdle, then you can also, you know, split it into several 
flavor with smaller amounts. And based on all those factors, you can define what asset allocation suits you best. And you cannot just do that once. You can do that every time something changes in your life. For example, right now, maybe you're starting out and you don't know how all of this works. So you start with maybe a high cash amount and you start low on stocks. And maybe in a year from now, you realize, oh, that wasn't that hard with investing in stocks. Let me buy more. And then you adapt your strategy. So I have adapted mine, for example, to 90% stocks and 10% cash. And then there are little investments here and there, like into P2P lending and also cryptocurrencies, but it's not that much. That's why in a broad general sense, I stick with the 90-10. Might adapt that over time though. Another example would be maybe you have been in your wealth building phase, but now suddenly you've got a huge payout because you sold your business. And then you might switch from building wealth to preserving wealth. And then you can also, you know, adapt your asset allocation immediately. And then when you've settled your asset allocation and you want to like move forward and you have, let's say an 80-20 asset allocation and you have $1,000 to invest each month, then you can keep $200 in cash and you can invest $800 into the stock market. Now your asset allocation might not just change because you decide you want it to change. It might also be that it changes because of how the market is developing. And that is where rebalancing comes in. Let me explain. Rebalancing means to restore your original asset allocation. And you usually do that once or twice a year. If for example, you have 80% in stocks and 20% in bonds, and during the year, the value of the bonds stay the same, but the value of the stocks go up. And now your asset allocation, without you doing anything, it shifted to maybe stocks being 90% of the portfolio because their value increased and stocks are now 10% of your portfolio. And now you have more risk in your portfolio than you initially intended to. And to get back to the original one, so the 80% stocks and 20% bonds, you would either have to buy more bonds, so they again are 20%, or you can sell stock so that they get back to the 80%. So to your ideal asset allocation. And that's what rebalance is. Now, I personally look at my numbers once a year and I don't just look at stocks and cash as a whole, but also into the different strategies I have in my like stocks department. And I have never sold. So if I want to rebalance, I buy a couple of more, but I only buy if it like strays more than 10% from what I want it to be. And up to this point, mine have pretty much stayed within that range. So for the rules I defined for myself, I never really had to rebalance or at least get active when it comes to rebalancing. So here's a 30 second wrap up. Asset allocation is how you split your portfolio into the different asset classes. It defines the risk and the performance of your portfolio. You personalize your asset allocation to your needs and you do that based on your time horizon, your risk tolerance and your financial goals. And you can adapt your asset allocation if your needs change anytime and you restore your original intended asset allocation by rebalancing your assets once or twice a year. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more about investment terms like this, also investment tips, investment strategies and money mindset, I have a weekly newsletter where I talk about all this stuff. It's completely for free. Cancel anytime. There's a link down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you got some value out of this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.